Hey everybody, Chad Wesley Smith here. We're sitting down with the uh, the prestigious Dr. Mike Isratel of uh, Renaissance Periodization, author of The Renaissance Diet. We just wanted to go over some different topics with them today and uh, the first one, we're seeing it all, it's all over the place, Instagram, social media, people, people literally going to war on carbs, Dr. Mike, but uh, you're you're here to defend the carbs. So the first thing that I kind of want to talk about is, you know, why are people making a mistake in vilifying carbs? Because, you know, really, why are they so important to your training? Yeah, very good question. Thanks for having me, by the way. What's up, guys? Um, the war on carbs rages on, and it has claimed so far zero lives, I believe. But uh, nonetheless, yes, I tend to be uh, a proponent and supporter of uh, relatively moderate carb intakes on average. There are several very good reasons why carbohydrates are a very good idea to eat during the training process of various times. The first reason, and this has been demonstrated very, very clearly over, oh, I don't know how many years of research, is that eating carbohydrates before training usually generally tends to make your training more productive. You can offer a better stimulus. You can probably lift more weight. You can certainly do more reps total. You can have harder workouts, and harder workouts are pretty good, well related to how good you become. So if you like training hard, eating carbs before you train is probably a very good idea. Secondly, eating carbohydrates after you train, if you're having really, really crazy long hard workouts, possibly a bit during training, is a very good way to prevent muscle loss. So when you start training, and especially towards the end of a long hard training session, certain catabolic hormones start to get on the rise, all right, and training is a in an acute sense, actually catabolic towards muscle. It actually breaks muscle down. Later, it stimulates further muscle growth. But if we can do something to dampen that muscle loss during the training process, we may have better results over the long term. So eating carbohydrates, certainly when you get home after training, is probably a good idea because carbohydrates have a profound effect on canceling out most types of catabolism or muscle loss. So for those two reasons, already carbohydrates are good. There's a third really big one. Glycogen is the primary source of fuel held inside your muscles. It is literally made of uh, components of glucose molecules, right? So it's carbohydrates, uh, high carbohydrate, high moderate carbohydrate diet is the only way to really build up your glycogen stores. Glycogen allows you to train hard, not just in this session, but consistently over and over for the, uh, the uh, different sessions in the day, for the different days of the week, and the different weeks of the month. If you have reloaded glycogen stores, which only happen by eating plenty of carbs, you can consistently perform well, stay anabolic more than catabolic, and have general awesome training adaptations and training results. Without carbohydrates, you can train hard a couple of times, but after a couple of days when your glycogen levels really start to dip, you're gonna notice that your training process is gonna go south really, really quickly, and you're also gonna notice that your adaptations, you might actually not notice this for a while, which is worse, your adaptations to training, how much muscle you grow, how much stronger you get, how much better you get at the events that you're training, is actually going to take a slight decrease because you're not able to put up the training intensity you're supposed to. Carbs are essential to the training process for serious high workload athletes. So some of the highest workload athletes out there are uh, you know, competitive CrossFitters, training for several hours a day uh, a lot of times. And paleo is obviously a very popular thing in the cross CrossFit community. Uh, you can kind of touch on maybe why paleo, a paleo-based diet is not the best choice for a competitive CrossFit athlete? Yeah, sure. So the paleo diet was originally paired with CrossFit back in CrossFit's early days where CrossFit appealed to uh, recreational fitness enthusiasts. And it's a very good diet for recreational fitness enthusiasts because you have people who do a CrossFit workout maybe two or three times a week, and the rest of the time they're computer engineers and they sit down. Do computer engineers sitting down need a lot of carbs in their diet? Absolutely not. Do they need a lot of refined carbohydrate that spikes insulin, might make you hungrier later? No, absolutely not. They need a lot of good, high quality, lean protein sources and plenty of healthy fats and fiber. That's, uh, those are nutritious, awesome ways to start a good diet, and they work really, really well for recreational athletes, uh, and people just wanted to get in shape. When you start with the birth of competitive CrossFit, and the, certainly the rise of it lately, you start to get really massive workloads. How long are these guys working out for, like five hours a day? Yeah, four or five hours, I think, in a lot of cases. So that's, I mean, that's the two things. It's utterly insane, and it's also completely necessary to be really good at CrossFit. When you work out for that long, you're simply gonna need the energy from carbohydrates, you're gonna need the anti-catabolic properties of carbohydrates, and you're also gonna need the glycogen repletion part of carbohydrates. So you can totally do paleo as a baseline of lean proteins and healthy fats and high fiber foods, but on top of that, 
paired to your workload, you're gonna need carbohydrates. So if you're still a recreational CrossFitter, you CrossFit two times a week, the rest of the time you sit around or you drive from work and back, you can totally do paleo, the original, and be just fine. But the more work you do, three, four, five days a week, one, two, three, four, five hours a day, can't believe that that's crazy to me, it makes sense. Um, you'll need much, much more carbohydrate. The typical CrossFitter who is working out at these elite levels, five hours a day, five days a week sort of thing, will need comparable levels of carbohydrate to endurance athletes. So, uh, you know, five, 600 grams of carbohydrate per day, totally typical, probably at the low end for some of these people, especially the heavier ones. For those athletes that are exerting tons of work and want recovery and adaptation, carbohydrates are necessary. Paleo is great as a baseline. On top of that, you add carbohydrates. Uh, so as people are considering you know, what type of carbs to eat and when to eat them, do you have some general guidelines? Yeah, sure. So carbohydrates, uh, the timing of carbohydrates, not really a big deal. And the composition of carbohydrates, what kind you eat, it's not a huge deal. It's a small part of the process, but it can make a small difference, especially for, for very good athletes wanting the best out of their performance. Generally speaking, you want to eat carbohydrates that are timed around your workout. Most of your carbs should come before, possibly during if you have long workouts, and especially after workout. After workout, your glycogen repletion rate, the ability of your body to take the carbs you eat and put them into the muscles, as opposed to other places like fat, slightly goes up. So in the post-workout window, you want to have lots of carbohydrates. Pretty good idea. On the other note, so yes, you're timing your carbohydrates to your workout, which is a good idea, but also it comes down to a question of types. Generally speaking, you want low glycemic carbohydrates further away from your workout, brown rice, whole grain pasta, oatmeal, that sort of thing. If you are very close right after your workout, or if it's a long and hard workout during your workout, you want a high glycemic carbohydrate to spike insulin, to be easier on digestion, to get into the blood and into the muscles as fast as possible. And high, high glycemic carbohydrates include things like Gatorade, sugary cereals, uh, and perhaps some of the more refined carbohydrates. So those are cool during and after the workout, but before the workout and uh, further away from the workout, the carbohydrates should probably be of the low glycemic, typical healthy varieties. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for uh, clearing those issues up, sure. Mike. Make sure you guys check out uh, the Renaissance Diet, available at jtsstrength.com, and uh, all of Dr. Isertel's excellent articles. Thank you.